Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Padawan Podcast, Apocalypse Movies All Star Wars Podcast, where we geek out on everything from the galaxy far, far away. I am Jake Berlin, aka Qui Gon Jake. I'm your host, and I am joined today by Jacob Barley, aka Grandma Barley, and Admiral Ackbarns himself, Keith Barnes. How are you boys doing? I'm doing great. Great. It's yeah. all Star Wars time. Excited to talk it's more so Star Wars. Close. Coming down the stretch. <laughs> it's so close. Almost yeah, there. I'm excited to have the Padawan back because we haven't done this in a few weeks. Yeah. Kind of yeah. been on a little hiatus. There hasn't been a whole bunch of news, but we got a whole lot to talk about, which is really exciting. Um, and we're going to jump right into it because we got some cool things to talk about. We're actually going to finish the show with these two guys pitching The Last Jedi, their personal stories for The Last Jedi, but we're saving that for the end of the show, so look out for that. Um, to begin the show, though, we got some news on Ryan Johnson in Episode 9. Um, Ryan Johnson has been building The Last Jedi from uh, before the J.J. Abrams' The Force Awakens had even hit the ears. And when the news broke that Lucasfilm was moving forward with a new director for Episode 9, fans everywhere were calling out for the Star Wars story group to bring Johnson back to conclude the trilogy. While Johnson wasn't announced to be back, it still left open the door for him to be involved. Well, during a recent interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Johnson revealed that that's not the, actually the case. He said the following, J.J. Abrams is doing a third movie. I'm not involved in it. They'll be writing their own story, but continuing on um, with what we did. So this may come to a little bit of surprise. You know, it kind of seems like everyone involved in Star Wars has been involved in the trilogy so far uh, in one way or another. He'll probably still be involved as an executive producer uh, because he did The Last Jedi. Um, but Jacob, did, does this come to kind of any surprise to you that he's not going to be involved at all with um, Episode Nine? A little bit. I like the fact that they said not at. He said not at all is surprising. Yeah. But no matter what, it's he's part of it. No matter what, because they're building off what he's building in the Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. So regardless whether he's physically there or talking to them on the phone or sending messages or emails or whatever, um, he's still it's still part of him, part mm -hmm. of his story, what he did in the Last Jedi. But I have a feeling he's still involved a little bit. You know, sometimes directors, they can be a little stubborn and like, they're kind of like head coaches or something. They, they don't want to give up the media any information, you know? They just want to, they're just going to say, no, no, I'm not involved at all. But I don't think they're asking him what they should do, but I think he's still involved somewhat. Like, I guarantee you, J.J. Abrams has Ryan Johnson on the text line and he's saying, hey, like, should I do this or this with uh, Ray in episode nine? What do you think? And Johnson gives his opinion and then JJ doesn't do exactly what he says, but he just, you know, takes it and it's a pointer. runs yeah. with that, you know, and like, uh, you know, takes his advice. So no, it doesn't surprise me, but it is a little bit shocking to hear him say not at all, but I would expect him to say that. Yeah. Keith, do you think uh, JJ Abrams has Ryan Johnson on speed dial? Uh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <yeah. laughs> well, whatever notes, I don't know how much he was really going to be involved anyway, because Colin Trevorrow was doing it. That's true. And he was writing a treatment. That makes sense. I didn't think so about that. Mm -hmm. He may, he probably wasn't going to be that heavily involved anyway. We know he was involved in a little bit in, uh, well, uh, well uh, Lost Stars. Yes. Probably, or or yes. not Lost Stars, uh, uh, Bloodline. Bloodline, he gave some Greg. pointers, he gave yeah. Some pointers there. And he probably had some notes, I'm sure, chimed in a little bit, maybe he was Rogue One even. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm sure, uh, did they announce him prior to Force Awakens? Uh, he was, I'm pretty how, sure how he was a, was I think that was before the movie was even released. I think so, yeah. Yeah, like so, sometime that summer, I want to say. He may have, you know, or maybe Star Wars Celebration that year. Yeah, that's probably, probably that so year. Star he may Wars not have been involved in that, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a huge surprise, uh, nor probably that big. It's not a big deal at all because Jamie I mean, J.J. Abrams, he's always kind of written, has had his own writing uh, process with his own guys, and uh, Ryan Johnson, he did his part. I'm sure with any notes or ideas he had or, or has or had, he's given to. Yeah. Given to Luke's film and uh, or the next director, whoever it was gonna be, and you know, once he said he was gonna be out, he said, "Here you guys go. This is my thoughts, and you can use them or don't." Yeah, I think the only way that he's involved is if J.J. Abrams calls him, is like, yeah. "Hey, what did you have in mind for this right. character when you made this move?" Exactly. Right. Or if, for the story point, what were you thinking for this character? He's in the not future? officially involved, yeah. but he's still gonna. I guarantee you, they're texting sure. all the time. Because so, I bet you, Ryan Johnson was texting J.J. Abrams absolutely. during the last well, Jedi. If I'm not, if, if yeah. I remember correctly, I think. I, th I don't know if this is true or not, and don't take take this for official or anything. But I believe that he shot the scene between Ray and Luke at the end of the yes, movie. Yes, he did. He directed that scene. You are right. So actually, he so he's been involved with it for a while, yeah. and so that's why I'm kind of surprised because it seems like directors are kind of just like they're all one big group. Yeah. All with these movies, but mm -hmm. he may just be Star Wars down. Probably. It, so it makes sense. I mean, Abrams didn't want to 
do one after yeah, directed but after it. after once he directed he's like i want to do this well again. if you're away from it for two years yeah. that's enough breathing mm-hmm. time to just you especially know, for a fan yeah to kind of recharge your batteries right. and just go back into it i'm mm-hmm. actually with time now i'm glad that jj is doing episode nine Me honestly it, it kind of rounds out the truly it's a cool way to kind of bring it all together <clears> so uh speaking of uniting everything um jj ames was recently in a sit down with bbc where he said we have to go elsewhere Um, When talking about the story, he and Chris Terrio are currently crafting for episode 9. But that's not the big story. The same day those words were released online, a Reddit user took to posting some comments he said he caught from Abrams and Terrio when meeting them outside an event last week, where he posted the following caption on his thread. They said that they are going to be brave, and there will be big surprises. I got the impression that JJ felt like he had to refresh previous Star Wars moments from a modern audience in The Force Awakens, and now it feels like they have free reign to do what, what they want. Apparently they've had no interference from Kathleen or Pablo or the Lucasfilm story group in Nine. Or Nine is also the film which unites all three trilogies and brings everything together. That's all they would tell me. He went on to say, I asked about elements of, of the prequel trilogy coming into Nine and Chris said about how Nine unites all of it. He said Nine definitely makes it feel like they're all happening in the same universe. Um, this for me, this is actually pretty cool because it's a lot of years of Star Wars coming together in one movie. I, we don't know how much exactly uniting really means. If it's a reference, if it's you know maybe just a name drop of something here or there. Uh, but it sounds like J.J. Abrams is going full fandom on this one <laughs> yeah. and bringing the insta- the entire Star Wars universe together. Um, and it's kind of cool because when Lucasfilm was first acquired by Disney. They wanted nothing to do with the prequels. But now over time, they're starting to reference them more, more and more. We saw it in Rogue One. We see it in Rebels all the time. Exactly, we see it in yeah. the comic lines yeah. all the time. Um, so it's pretty cool that they're kind of venturing into the actual saga part of it. Uh, it's going to be interesting going forward to see what part of that is. Maybe it's a uh, Hayden Christensen cameo is, you know, Anakin I wouldn't Skywalker. Be surprised, honestly. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> Keith, you hear these comments, you read this. Um, what do you think of them? You know, first of all, J.J. Abrams kind of wanted to take the franchise elsewhere. And then if those comments from the Reddit user are actually true, what do you think of those comments? Oh, man. Uh, I like the Well, the idea of tying in all three trilogies yeah. is... Uh, I love the word uniting. You're right. <laughs> the word uniting just sounds right. Well, yeah, and I think that, that could... It, and like you said, it could be anything just yeah. from just some planets. You know, maybe we'll finally see Coruscant. Which Ooh, that's a good call. Maybe, that's a good call. Maybe if I was writing one of these movies, I would include Coruscant. We'll get to that later. <laughs> well, we know uh, that the the Hosnian Prime was destroyed. Maybe they go back yeah. to Coruscant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's definitely a possibility. Or or what what else? Uh, with Naboo, maybe we'll see Naboo again, or whatever. It could be any number of things. Uh, uh, certainly from the prequels, from the original trilogy. Uh, you know, maybe characters like uh, Lando. See again, maybe we'll see Lando again, or maybe uh, uh, I don't know, who knows? Any, any Yavin anything. Four, yeah, Yavin Four again, which I think we'll see. Uh, I think we'll see too. I think yeah, we'll see that in maybe this next movie coming up. But uh, <laughs> but the comments from the Reddit user, yeah, that's, I mean all of that. It's, like you just mentioned, just J.J. Abrams, just as a fan. I mean, he you can tell just just the fact that it, that's what they're doing, that's the direction they're going. He he is a fan, uh, but he's also not. He's not so much of a fan that it's clouding his his uh, uh, his judgment in the way he's crafting these stories. Uh, he's doing it all. He's got people. He's got the right people behind him. Uh, we're working with the story group, like you mentioned, and what, with Lucasfilm, and them giving him the reins to do it because mm-hmm. he is so knowledgeable about the uh, all three trilogies. Uh, it works, man. I, it's, it's exciting. I can't wait to see. Can't wait to see how they how they tie together. This is <laughs> fascinating, man. I this makes me so happy because look, no matter what. The prequels are part of Star Wars. Yeah. It's canon, yeah. and I love that they're referencing and involving can or yeah. the the are the prequels into canon now with the books, the comics, everything they're referencing it. I mean, I know that the Clone Wars were referenced in the original trilogy, but they were a big part of the prequels. Mm-hmm. And Kylo Ren does make a reference to maybe they clone should have troopers. a clone troop, a clone, <laughs> yeah. a clone army. army. Yeah. yeah. So it's like they're not completely disregarding it, but. This is so fascinating. How are this is huge, honestly. Mm-hmm. This is huge. How is this it? Could, gonna, this could have a it, big impact. If it's true, yeah. if it is true, it's huge because what does that mean? Yeah. That means that's not just a reference. That doesn't mean a, a line drop. Like it has to be something more than that. I have a, a I think that we're gonna see Anakin. Hating Christian. Hating Christian yeah. as a force ghost. Because look, 
they have the ability, Force users have the ability to contact dead Force users. It, we, we've seen it. We know it's true. We're going to see Obi-Wan. I don't think all in the same movie. I think some of them are going to be in 8, some of them are going to be in 9, maybe in the future. But we're going to see Obi-Wan, we're going <laughs> to see Yoda, and we're going to see Anakin. Not all together. Maybe Yoda and Obi-Wan together. But I think Kylo is going to talk to Anakin somehow. Ky and Anakin is going to uh tell kylo like look i made a mistake going down the dark side i was wrong you need to you know make the right decision who knows but i yeah i think that's how it's going to be tied together but it can be a number of different ways it can be yeah. just a certain character from the prequel eras who's still a lot i mean that's a long time it would be really <laughs> old actually never mind but who knows maybe a relative of somebody maybe. or like somebody who connected to somebody in the original trilogy who knows or to the prequel trilogy so we'll see uh but i love this honestly it's, yeah it, it sounds it, amazing it's well it's just cool the fact that they're kind of now acknowledging the prequels after yeah. all of these oh, yeah. years of not wanting to touch them because of how bad they were and, still star wars yeah <laughs> it's, it's it's super cool and well the fact that you know at least for us we grew up on them oh yeah definitely. Know, and we that those that's kind of our star wars even though the original trilogy is the real star wars the prequel trilogy is what star wars is to us because we grew up on them so yeah. Um, before we get to canon, uh, we're going to jump into a, a new image, I guess you could say, has popped up online. A new IMAX standee for The Last Jedi. Um, it's the big cardboard cutouts that are all around theaters around, around the U.S., around you know the world. And this one is a little bit interesting because it actually features two sides. One side, you got the Resistance with the light side. You have Rey, you got Poe, you got Finn with Luke. The other side, you have Kylo Ren, Phasma, Hux. And then you have a dark side-esque Luke. Uh, with a hood over his head instead of a Snoke type character, maybe possibly hinting towards a dark side Luke in the film. Um, Jacob, I'm going to go back to you for this one uh, to start off. Do you think this is maybe just playing with our heads a little bit, or could it actually hint be hinting at seeing a dark side esque Luke in the film? All right, they are totally messing with us, honestly. <laughs> Lucasfilm, it's like they get off on tr trying to trick us. I don't know what's going on. The trailer. Is totally misleading, um, and this is totally misleading. But I think there's a little hint of truth to this because I don't think necessarily they're saying that Luke is going to be a Sith. Like, no, that's not what they're saying. They're saying that Luke has some demons, and oh, we're yeah. going to see those demons like come to light in the the movies in the next couple of movies. He's not going to so, be the same guy. Yeah, not at all. You could tell from the trailer he looks terrified and like yeah. anger, fear. That's what drives the dark side so he's going to be whatever they call a gray jedi that's what luke is honestly and in my opinion he's not he's a balance fully between two. light he's yeah. not a full light side he's not full dark side and you could parts you can maybe say the same about kylo i mean he's more more towards the dark side obviously but we know he struggles with the light and the dark so i think that's just the common theme in star wars throughout its history and we're just going to see the darkest in Luke we've ever seen in this film. I think. Yeah, I completely agree. I think he's he's just, he's a guy who has gone through hell in the oh last decade or so. And just um, yeah. the fact that, his one, life, really. his father was Darth Vader. It is, now his nephew is becoming Kylo Ren. His whole Jedi Academy went up in flames. Um, that's all happened in, you know, in the last you know so many years. And... Uh, he's different. Like he says in the trailer, he's seen that kind of power before. It didn't scare him now. It scares him. It didn't scare him then. It scares him now. And, and he has reasons why it should scare him now. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be interesting going forward. It, honestly, I mean, there's a chance we could see a dark side Luke in the film. Yes, there is a possibility. But I don't know if they'll actually go there because of what Luke has meant over the years to everyone. And it would be it would be different for him to turn dark at this moment rather than... Five, ten, five years ago, ten years ago, whatever it is, yeah. instead of at this moment, um, I would, I wouldn't mind seeing a dark side Luke because I think it'd be interesting, um, but I don't think it's personally going to happen because he just no. we haven't seen him in what thirty years uh, as as a prominent character. Why not give us the Luke that we always wanted, the powerful yeah. Luke that we yeah. always wanted, um, instead of making him his father again? I guess you could say just a little bit older. <clears throat> I don't think he's going to be straight up evil. No, even no, if he is. He's, what would be his motive? To, he doesn't want to take over the galaxy. Yeah. The only way I see him being evil is if he thinks that, like, Jedi's Force users are too dangerous and he wants to kill Rey and kill Kylo because he thinks this power should not exist anymore. You can, you have the power to run the whole galaxy. Yeah. You have that power. That would be the only way he's bad, you know? And that's interesting. Yeah. That is quite interesting. Keith, what do you think? Well, the whole 
thing of Luke. He's not going to the dark side. That's not even. <laughs> no, 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 not no, even no. Issue. Neither is Ray. Uh, the whole point of Luke, the idea of him killing anyone for uh, the, the, as soon as he does that, you know, the, the reason they, had, they didn't have him kill the Emperor is because once he does that, he becomes dark. Yeah. Darth Vader, yes. basically, and that's why he refused to do it. He's not going to do that. Although he does kill a bunch of people on that barge. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all bad people. Those are all bad people. Uh, I mean, just just slayed a bunch of you know, like thirty guys on that barge. But uh, that was a fight. You know, they were fighting him. But uh, yeah, as soon as he does that, he. So I don't know that he's gonna. Just like you said, that'd be the only way. And mm -hmm. I, I, he's not gonna do that necessarily. Um, Who knows? But he's angry. <laughs> he might be upset. Uh, uh, you know, and he, that fear. Is a path of dark exactly. side, they say so. And he looks terrified. It does in look the trailer. very frightening. Well, what's so. interesting is so for us, the ones who are kind of involved in this, we know that that's not going to happen. Yeah. The public out there, when they see this poster, yeah. yeah, it's a whole different ball game for them. And Lucasfilm was playing a very, very smart thing by doing it. Yeah, they know what they're doing because <laughs> the average movie going audience is there. When they see that trailer, they're like, "Oh my God!" Ray's, they're like Luke Ray's and Kylo teaming up with Luke, Kylo, or like, Luke and Kylo Ren together in the poster. They don't think to look at the background and say, "Oh, they're yeah. they're not in the same spot." When when they show Ray and Kylo, yeah. And I, if I'm not mistaken, does Kylo even have the scar on his face when he puts his hand he out? Yes. yes. So he does? so okay. in the trailer, okay. I, I actually uh, we were I was talking about this with some people, but there's two parts in the trailer. One where he has the the kind of carbon coverage yeah, on yeah, his yeah, face, yeah. and then it's just the scar. Mm -hmm. The carbon coverage is immediately after he gets it. Yeah. I think okay. that's in the beginning of the film. Yeah. Over the time, the scar starts to heal, and yeah. he takes the carbon covering okay. off. Okay, right. that's what I think is going to happen. So is they... the carbon stuff off when he puts yes. his hand yes. out? Yes. Oh, shit. So that's okay. near the end okay. of the movie. Definitely. We don't know who he's talking to, obviously. Right. So he has healing powers like Wolverine. So yeah. No, yeah. Kylo Ren and Wolverine Kylo. combination? There oh. you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wolverine uh, force before we wrap up our movie news and get into canon, I want to get you, get your guys' quick thoughts on, on the announcement of Solo, a Star Wars story. Oh, I know we right. got yeah. we got your thoughts on the Barley broadcast, <laughs> which you get to see uh, up on the channel now. Um, so, Keith, I'm going to go to you first, man. Uh, the Han Solo spinoff movie was officially announced to be a Solo, a Star Wars story. Uh, very simple. In line with Rogue One, a Star Wars story. What do you think of the name, and do you like it? I love it. It couldn't be called anything else. <laughs> oh. Nerf Herder. Uh, Scoundrel. Mm. Uh, whatever. No, it could, what, Solo. That's what it's going to be. That, that was the working title, <laughs> which is funny. I think they were calling it Solo Cup. Or no, Red, so, Cup. Red, Cup. Red Cup. Red Cup. So yeah. it was like, it's oh, going to be called wow. Solo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I, I yeah. like it too. I mean, it's, it's simple. It's straight yeah. to the point. There's also a hidden mean, meaning because... Han always seems to kind of work on his own, sure. yeah. solo. Uh, for me, I was actually hoping for something along the lines of Smuggler's Bounty. I think Smuggler's would be Bounty cool. would have been something really cool. Like but solo, people are going to know what solo well, exactly. means. They have to have Han Solo. They know what the solo title. means. And so, uh, Jacob, we heard your thoughts on the Barley broadcast, but quickly, um, now that it's kind of just sitting... They sitting, need to drop the a Star Wars story part immediately. Agree. Go back to anthology. I don't like just solo, honestly. I don't... I, Han Solo, a Star Wars story. I'm fine with that, but if they're going to keep the Star Wars story part, I don't know why they just didn't call it Han Solo. Han Solo. But I don't know. It just sounds weird, Solo, I don't, to me. But please drop the a Star Wars story part in Star Wars Anthology, Han Solo. Anthology, Doesn't that sound so anthology much better? Anthology was so much better. Yeah. So Star much Wars better. Anthology, Han Solo. A Star Wars story just sounds too Disney for me. It definitely it, does. Too Disney, it especially really in this does. situation. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that wraps up movie news. We're going to get into some canon stuff. Uh, before we get into some Rebels and books, we're actually going to talk about a comic that's now coming in January. Um, of the many, many characters we'll get to learn more about or see for the first time in The Last Jedi this December, Benicio Del Toro's DJ is easily one of the more intriguing ones. Who is he? Which side is he on? Is he Force-sensitive? On top of hopefully getting all those questions answered in the film, Bleeding Cool has revealed that Marvel will be giving the character a bit of a backstory in a one-shot comic that's set to be released in January. Here's a little synopsis. When Star Wars The Last Jedi takes theaters in force this December, Star Wars fans will get a peek into some new dark corners of the galaxy far, far away, and out of those corners scuttles DJ, the mysterious character played by Benicio Del Toro. Who is this mystery man, and what put him in the path of our resistance heroes? Join Ben Acker and Ben Blacker of Star Wars The Last Jedi and Storms of Crate, and Kev Walker of Star Wars Dr. Aphra as they reveal a day in DJ's life just before his appearance in the film. Um... I think I, I can say for all of us that we're really looking forward to this character. I think we all have different theories as to who he is. 
with Jacobs probably being the most interesting and uh, most theorized theory, I guess you could say, out there. Uh, but I love this. I mean, I love that they're kind of venturing into different corners of the galaxy, as they say in the synopsis. Different characters. Um, I hope he's a big part of Star Wars, because why would you get Del Toro to play oh, yeah. anyone? Oh, just yeah. a small role. Like, don't get him to play a small role. Make him important in the Star Wars universe. Uh, so the fact that we're getting more of him, I'm excited. Um, what do you think of the of the comic coming? Just the one-shot comic and... You know, I know you have a theory, so who do you think he is in the movie? Well, I'm going to save that for my pitch of the movie. Okay, who fair I enough. Think he is. Fair enough. But just the idea that they're doing the comic, it, it tells me that he's more important than yes. we think he is, honestly. And uh, uh, like you said, they wouldn't get Benicio Del Toro if they're going to do some little tiny movie, well, you know? And the fact that it comes out in January says that we can't reveal anything about him. Exactly. So, I, I have my thoughts. I'm going to go into that later, but... I think this is really cool. It's just like the crate one. It's coming mm -hmm. out after yeah, the last the storms Jedi. Yeah, the storms of crate, so, yeah. This is why Star Wars is so amazing because you get to watch the movie and then you get so much like outside stuff. Just weeks later. To feed your <laughs> appetite because look, I'm going to go watch the movie. I'm going to go watch it the next day, honestly. Pro yeah, absolutely I am. And then I'm going to go read all these comics as soon as they come out and like I'm just going to be on a Star Wars high for two months straight like after once, once this movie comes <laughs> Seriously. out. So this just adds to it. What do you think? Oh, I I, I can't even. I don't know who he is. Like I, I can't even guess. Like I, I'm curious to hear what you're. I, well, he's probably gonna your... be just a random new character. Probably. If I had to put money on it, that's what I would say. Yeah, he's I a random so. new character. But he's apparently he's very important. Like you just. I said, think like he's important. About, yeah. So I can't wait to see what where he fits in, what role he is, who he's connected to that we do know, uh, or and where he's from. Um, so yeah, like you said, I mean Benicio del Toro. He's he always plays. He t he takes these characters and he always plays them in some weird yeah. way too. I can't yeah. wait to see what what he what especially he in does. a Star Wars world. Yeah. You know, yeah. What kind of weird thing? What kind of acting choices he makes? To yeah. Uh, yeah, like uh, with Forrest Whitaker with the <laughs> weird accent with Saul Guerrero. I I hope it's not not a role like Forrest Whitaker oh, because his goodness. role is so small. Right. Yeah, it, that, it, that, it, yeah. Like it played an important role in the film. Yes, in the story overall. But as far as the movie goes and time wise, it was a very small role. It I was, think he's gonna have a very short role I, in Last Jedi and a bigger role in Episode Nine. I, I, I wouldn't mind. That's yeah, okay. I, would, I would not mind. Not gonna have time to get to it. Yeah, yeah. Depth, I, you know, I would not mind that at all. Nah. So I'm I'm okay with that. Um, all right. Well, moving on, we're gonna talk a little bit of Rebels. Uh, Jacob and I have seen the first two episodes. Heroes of Mandalore. Keith is not. We're not gonna talk any kind of spoilers in this. Just quickly our thoughts. Um, I watched the premiere on Monday. You just watched it yesterday. I watched the first episode last night and the. Second episode this All right, morning. so you're fresh. So let's yeah. get into thoughts from you and your point of view of Heroes of Mandalore Part 1 and Part 2. Um, I liked it. It, it. In my opinion, it wasn't... I'm not as interested in the Mandalore stuff as I am in the bigger picture of Star Wars Rebels. Like, mm -hmm. what's going on with the Rebellion, Ezra, Kanan. Where are they going to end up? I'm not as interested in the Mandalore stuff. But it was cool. It was a cool little story. It felt like a little short film. Mm -hmm. Only a, about Mandalore, about Sabine. And I forget the... The name of the sister, of Satine's sister. bo -Katan. Yeah, okay, so mm. it was cool to figure out all that stuff, you know, ties into the Clone Wars mm -hmm. TV show, again, referencing the prequel era. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did enjoy it. There were very fun episodes. I love Sabine as a character. I think she's great. That dark saber, I'm in love with that dark saber. Ever since I've seen it, I saw it on Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. I love that dark saber. I want to see it in live action Ugh. sometime, somehow, some way. I want to, it's so that'd important be, that'd be too. so cool. Like, the the meaning that it has behind it mm -hmm. it's history it's so important so i did really enjoy these episodes but they're not my favorite i'm very glad i will say it's not a spoiler but i thought the storyline that they were telling was going to drag on throughout the whole season they basically wrapped it up in these two episodes which i love that it was fine to open up the season with this see where everybody's at not much hera which was a little disappointing hmm. no zeb at all yet nope um, but we're going to get into that throughout the whole season. Oh, yeah. I think this ha is possibly going to be the best season yet. We'll see how it all ends up. But I did enjoy them. Yeah, no, I, I echo all your thoughts. I think the one thing that we can say about this these episodes is that it was kind of folding Sabine back into the ghost crew. Oh, definitely. It, it, towards the end of season three, she kind of disappeared. Well, I felt like she was going to be separated. Yeah, from well, them. she kind of yeah. disappeared for a while because she was taking on the Mandalore mm -hmm. stuff. It's like she was gone. Now she's back. Yeah, I she's love She's no that. longer I the leader of, of her clan and all this stuff. She's now back with the Ghost Crew. Um, I think it was just a cool introduction. Like you said, it kind of wraps up the story into two oh, yeah. episodes. And now we don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, I like I like seeing Bo-Katan back. She was a really cool character in the Clone Wars. She's voiced by uh, Katie Sackhoff. 
Oh, oh I, yeah. I forgot about that. She's voiced that. by Katie That's Sackhoff, awesome. so mm -hmm. I'm hoping she has a cool role going forward. I don't know if it'll be major, but I hope she pops up here and there. Um, Ezra and Kanan look awesome. Once again, Ezra is, you know, a little bit older, a little bit more powerful. Uh, Kanan looks just as much more powerful as, as he was. Um, so I'm, I, I didn't, again, like Jacob said, it wasn't great. It wasn't awesome, but it was a great introduction. There was some cool action. There was. There was some when really cool stuff. The in cliff there. with Ezra, oh, that was awesome. The cliff, Indiana Jones. Dude, that was. That's a reference yeah. by Dave Filoni. 1000% to Dude, Indiana Jones. I love I was like, that's so badass. So what we're talking about, there's a scene and I'll just, it's from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Yeah, right. It's a cliff scene. Okay, it's yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> okay. So yeah, go check out those episodes. I'm sure they're going to probably play before uh, the next episode on Monday. Uh, Keith, you hear us kind of talk about this and um, you know, what we think of it. Uh, are you excited about not just these episodes, but the Rebels going forward? Very much. I love Rebels. Uh, I'm kind of sad knowing that this is gonna be yeah a few it makes months. sense though uh it definitely makes sense yeah. uh and i'm curious i'm wondering uh is are we gonna see mandalore at all do you think we'll ever see after That's this what I'm wondering. In, where in rebels or live action because one of the one of the things well, either mandalore at all because during the original what, trilogy because they play such a big role in they? clone wars and in rebels and when you guys just mentioned when sabine left last season to mm -hmm. stay there it seemed that one of the a lot of the rumors was that the next animated series would be about her and whatever's happening on mandalore post Post Jedi, post uh, Jedi, Return or Jedi, even just yeah. throughout the you know throughout the, the original trilogy. Trilogy. So I'm wondering. I mean, does it? Do you it guys is, get a sense of? It is one of the well-known planets that has not made an appearance. Where yet. is Mandal Mandalore? Well, I don't. Know, I don't like, know geographically. I'm not you sure. Don't know. I'm not. I think it's more. I think I it's more outside. I think it's. I'm pretty sure it's more outside. Yeah, there's maps all around Google and stuff, but I think it's more outside. Um, compared, you know, not as far as like Tatooine. Like I'm wondering how close is it to, you know, Tatooine or Naboo I think it's in the inner river, you know? I think it's an inner rim planet. Because why were they, the stuff that goes down in the original trilogy is, is like, it's the whole galaxy is at stake. Mm -hmm. right. Why wasn't Mandalore involved? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And was Boba Fett, was he tied to the Mandalore? Like, was he like on Mandalore? Like, did he ever go back to Mandalore? Like I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, like I don't believe like... Jango Fett was from not from there, but he was from the the moon. Uh, uh, so he was Mandalorian. Dawn, though, he's Mandalorian. He, he they Mandalorian. have the Mandalorian armor and jetpack but, but, and everything, right? But yeah. he was still Mandalorian. But he was from the the moon. I think it was. I want to say Conquered Dawn or whatever it was called. Okay, that was uh, one of the Mandalore's moons. So I'm just curious. Like, do they? Does Mandalore get blown up? Like, does? Right. Are they just? Do they like just stay out of it? Are I they neutral? I never yeah. thought about that. Because That's where what, are they? Yeah. And does. Does Palpatine, like, what is he, how does he handle the Mandalores? Right. Like, because you know, if you're not in line with the Empire, you're, you're getting something done to you. So, right. I'm just curious about well, that, Well, if you go back and watch the Clone Wars, they actually have a huge part of that story because Very there's, there's, sep there's a lot of factions in that world. Like, yeah. people who are trying to take over the world, oh, yeah. people who are trying to protect it. Right. So, that is a very interesting, maybe we'll have to do some kind of a theory as to where I think we'll pitch. find out. I think Rebels will answer that question. Yeah. I hope so. Because they're going to have to explain mm -hmm why they weren't involved somehow in, I the, hope so. in the bigger right. picture. Yeah, so uh, mm. we'll wrap, that'll wrap up our Rebels talk. We're going to get into some books. Uh, we're going to talk about Phasma, and then we're going to talk about From a Certain Point of View, uh, which I will be talking about. Jacob's going to take over the Phasma talk. Non-spoiler, very quickly, you're just a couple chapters yeah, in. Yeah, I'm only about five chapters yeah, in. So what do you think about uh, Phasma so far? I love it. It's great. <laughs> good to hear. I, I, I forgot who wrote it, but... Um... That's good to hear because Brian, Brian actually didn't like it. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. Well, I'm only five chapters That's in. True. I could end That's up true. not liking it. But the way it's written, the way the story is told, where Phasma's from and how she how she so it is revealed. who she is, yes. Okay, good. Um, it's amazing. It's fascinating. Hmm. I don't... Well, we'll see by the time I finish the book. As of right now, from the information you obtain, I don't think it's an absolutely must-read, but there's some important players in this novel, and there's a connection to certain characters in the new trilogy that is very important and a little bit of tie into the Aftermath trilogy. Okay. Um, actually a pretty big tie-in in a way, a certain character. And that's only five chapters in. Yes. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. So I did want to mention, there's one line in the book that reveals a lot to me and makes me understand Captain Phasma a little bit more. Some people can, could consider this a spoiler. I talked to Jake, he doesn't mind if I reveal it. It's not a spoiler. I don't consider it a spoiler. Yeah, there, there will but be a spoiler People are very right sensitive about spoilers. So if you don't want to know anything about the Phasma book, skip ahead 20 seconds. I'm you just going to, or a minute, let's <laughs> say a minute, because you guys might want to talk about it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll wave our hands when we're done. How about that? So basically, somebody else is telling the story in the book. 
like a different character that's not Phasma, okay? Hmm. And she says one thing about Captain Phasma. It's one line. She says, Phasma will do anything to survive. <sighs> anything. That it's emphasized. It's a that line it ends a chapter. It's she's she said, one thing I learned about Phasma, she would do anything to survive. What does that tell you about her actions in The Force Awakens? Does it, does it help you understand what her actions that in the movie? and the comic run. Remember when she mm -hmm. went off books in the comic yeah. run? Yeah. So, listen, people were upset with Phasma because, oh, she's supposed to be this great warrior, this big loyal to the First Order, but... I mean, I feel like, from what I know about Phasma, I feel like she could have taken Finn and Han out mm -hmm. easily, mm -hmm. honestly. Oh, no, no question. No but question. I'm just curious. She has a deeper motive. She's kind of, she's part of the First Order, but she kind of works for herself in a way. And she's almost like Bubba Fett. That she, sounds like, that sounds like So Thrawn, listen, so she Thrawn's took, doing the same thing. So she put the shields down or whatever, and because she did it so she could survive, you know? Yeah. That's what oh, I'm saying. That's man. what it told me about Self Phasma. Self-preservation. Exactly. Her, her. Herself, she comes first. Right. Then she'll, you know, the first order. But, yeah. So now, that's, how, is, how is that going to play in The Last Jedi? So, we'll see. But, yeah. <sighs> I, Phasma, so far, I'm loving Phasma. I, I definitely recommend it. Well, after... So, Brian, Brian had said that he wasn't a huge fan of it. And now that you, the way you're talking and the, the line you just revealed, now I'm interested in yeah. reading it. Yeah, just it from out. that one line, I'm check. interested in reading the it. The storytelling is amazing. The way the story is told... How it's being told is really cool. You gotta right. check it out. Yeah. All right. Now I'm intrigued. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Same here. So, um, yeah. So I'm gonna go on to uh, from a certain point of view. If you have never heard of this book, it's a no uh, not a, I guess it's like a novel of short stories, forty different stories from forty different authors. Uh, we do the audiobook, so I'm actually listening to it. I'm only about five stories into it so far, um, but I gotta say this is probably one of the cooler Star Wars books to be released. I can't wait to. It is listen to so it, different, and what's really cool about it. Is it goes chronologically, and it oh, kind of oh, like really? kind of like how the Lost Stars told told a story outside of the original trilogy. Right. This kind of does the same thing, and so there's a wow, story to begin the book awesome. that is based around a character when Leia is giving the Death Star plans to R two D T in the beginning of New Hope. There's also a story based around R two when he's in the sand crawler with C three P O on Tatooine, and so and they're all based around characters that we'd never heard of. Smaller characters that are in the background that make appearances. That's awesome. Um, there's one about a Jawa that's actually probably one of my favorites right now. Uh, he's a you know, lonely Jawa. I didn't know this, but when I saw the cover, Claudia Gray wrote one of the stories. Yes, and I haven't gotten to that one yet. I have not got to that one yet. I wonder if um, it's Leia. I don't know. I'm going to find out. Yeah, there's one There's one about Obi-Wan, and there's one about Boba Fett later on in the book. <sighs> I have a, I, I have a, <laughs> I have a feeling they're saving those for last to kind of get people oh, through it. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, or when they show up in the timeline. Mm. Uh, but I, and I want to reveal something that would ruin one of the <laughs> stories. But it's so cool how oh, they do man. it. It has something to do with R two, okay, and something that happened um, in the movie, and mm. and now it gives us a reason as to why it happened. Yes. Um, the only thing that I'm afraid of with this book. Is I don't want it giving unnecessary information to a big character that we just don't need to find oh, out. Oh, okay. Like I you see. know, uh, some some books or maybe like a spinoff movie. Like say a Bubba Fett spinoff movie, and they get you know I don't know. Let's say John Hamm to play him because he's voicing him in the book. We don't ever need to know that that John Hamm is playing because I don't want to know that Bubba Fett takes his helmet off. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. want that. I don't want unnecessary information. So I'm holding out and waiting and kind of hoping that they're not going to do that in the book. They won't. Um, they but we'll won't. see. I'm only a few stories in. So far, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's really fun. It's really different. Uh, it's a whole bunch of different characters, which is really cool in the Star Wars world. So Definitely. Claudia Gray has... I heard in an interview say that Obi Wan Kenobi was her favorite character, and she's always oh, wanted to write. Maybe she, God. maybe she wrote, she wrote the Obi Wan, Obi -Wan part. Story. Oh that my would God. be incredible. I would love this. They should get her to write the Obi Wan spinoff. We'll have her be part of the script in the writers' room for the Obi Wan yeah. movie. That would be amazing. Oh, J.K. Rowling does it now. Yeah. I, after yeah. we get, I'm gonna have to look up what story Claudia Gray wrote. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it, wrote that. it has to be on that's, there. That's yeah. cool. So uh, yeah, that's gonna wrap up our canon section. We're gonna go on to our address the academy. And like I teased earlier, these two guys are gonna be pitching their last Jedi stories. And for that segment, we're actually gonna move to audio as they're gonna be looking over notes, and we're kind of gonna go into depth about it. Uh, we're gonna switch here in just a second. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. So the deal is that they're going to pitch it. I'm actually going to pick one. So it kind of pick a winner, I guess you could say. 
We're not doing points or anything. It's just a little fun little thing we're going to start doing on here. Eventually, we're going to pitch uh, spin-off movies. Uh, we're going to pitch uh, different stories in the Star Wars universe. What ifs? What ifs, like Jacob had mentioned, like, what if Darth Maul ha was not killed and moved on to live through the prequel trilogy? Like, that's something we had talked about. So look out for that in future Padawans. But for now, we're going to be pitching The Last Jedi. If Ryan Johnson was never brought on to direct the movie, if these two guys were directing it, stay tuned. All right, guys. So we're here to talk about the pitching of The Last Jedi from Jacob and Keith. Uh, they actually just did a Rochambeau match to see who goes first. And Keith will be shooting his pitch first. Um, as I said earlier, this is uh, if Ryan Johnson was never brought on to write or direct. Um, they're both going their different ways. Uh, I think Keith is going completely opposite way. Um, Jacob is kind of going off of what he's seen so far, maybe some story points here and there. So they're definitely going to be different. And like I said, I'm going to be choosing basically the winner or the better uh, uh, pitching that I like. Uh, so Keith, without further notice, man, go go for it. Let's see what your last Jedi is. My last Jedi. So if I was making this movie, and there's a first of all, there's a lot that I would have done. I would have made sure that uh, I read kind of a whole lot of stuff that happened before. But. In the Force Awakens. <laughs> Oh, all the way back. Oh, too. okay. Way, way okay. back. So, but, it's, <laughs> but based on what has happened, what I would do, I would start this movie off with uh, the uh, the First Order is, well, the basic premise is going to be, uh, I'm not going to go scene by scene, I'm just going to give a basic premise, because uh, I, I, I try to keep it a little simple, but then I started going, uh, you know, going, uh, going crazy, so I had to scale it down. But the First Order is going to attack all the core systems and inner rim, inner rim systems to try to draw out the resistance. Ooh. And so they're going to attack Coruscant. They're going to attack. They already hit Hosnian Prime. They're going to hit uh, uh, Corellia, uh, all those uh, inner rim and, and core core planets. Anything, anywhere that had a Jedi Temple, uh, anywhere where uh, the Senate was uh, operating, you know, the Senate rotates around about with five different systems. So they're going to hit all those, trying to draw out the resistance. And finish them off once and for all. And they're going to bring their whole fleet, their whole fleet, to try to actually physically, by force, take over the galaxy. Jesus. That, <laughs> meanwhile, Kylo Ren is searching for Rey, hunting down Rey, sort of like Vader in uh, Empire, where mm -hmm. he's looking for Luke Skywalker. Hunting down Luke, yeah. But he's actually out there. In his starfighter. In his starfighter. Yeah. Is he alone? Escorts with him. Oh, escort, okay. Looking okay. for her. Uh, he'll be a part of this this course and fight uh, this uh, first order thing, but he's he's going to be actively searching for Ray, uh, and maybe Luke, but he's looking for Ray. Uh, meanwhile, Finn, because of his knowledge, similar to what he did with Starkiller Base, uh, where he kind of his knowledge of Starkiller Base to go in there and uh, uh, try to try to destroy that place, uh, he gets sent to the unknown regions. To find the first order base. Whoa! So uh, part of him going to that uh, the casino place, uh, uh, Canto, Canto Bite, Canto Bite, Canto Bite, is him getting information on exactly where that is, and uh, uh, him and uh, the, the girl uh, Rose, Rose, yeah. Kelly Marie Tran's Kelly character, Marie Tran, yeah. yeah, Rose. Uh, and I think they said her sister is an X-wing pilot. Yes, so, yeah. she's no, she's the lead, uh, the a lead A-wing pilot. A -wing a -wing pilot. pilot. Yeah, she's the leader yeah, of the A-wings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're gonna be off trying to find the First Order base out in the uh, Unknown Regions. And meanwhile, while that's happening, uh, back on uh, whatever planet Luke is on. Octo. Which is out there. Is that what it's called? It's called Octo, yeah. What? I missed that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, I think that's out there, too. In the Unknown uh, Regions? I think it is. Uh, well, we don't know said, that. We don't know where it is. I, yeah, I think that I had a theory. Oh man, see, it's tied into another theory. <laughs> <laughs> Went along with the Thrawn novel, which I, we haven't. Has anyone read that? I was like I two chapters into it. Yeah. Oh, I'll okay. get to it. Yeah. Oh man. Ah, okay. Y'all gotta finish that. I, <laughs> well, anyway. Okay. Well, I think Luke is out there, uh, <clears throat> from wherever he's from, and uh, fearful of another betrayal, Luke becomes reluctant to complete Ray's training. After sending her pulled to the dark side from Snoke, so uh, uh, they, so, so there are they're they're training, but once he sees how powerful she is and he can sense that Snoke is after her the way that he was after um, Ben Solo, they have a little uh, kind of an argument about it. She leaves and she tries to regroup with the Resistance, finds out where Finn is. She goes after Finn, 
Oh. To find him. Oh no. Bring him back, and she gets captured by Supreme Leader Snoke, and is brought before him. And that's the scene we get in the trailer where he's, uh, because he's clearly talking to her. Yeah. Uh, and I think the movie will end. I would end it. Well, not that I think the movie. I would end this movie with Luke getting wind that Snoke has gotten his hands on Rey, and he's gonna leave his planet finally and go get her. So he's on Octo the entire time. He's gonna stay. Oh wow. man! I think he's gonna stay. All right. Wow. All right, so Jacob. We don't see Luke fight in your. He's not gonna fight in this movie. Oh, but he no does. Way. Does he have a big part? He has a big part. But he just no fight. Just training. Rick. So no lightsaber well, igniting gonna, or anything. He's not gonna fight. I, no. Oh man! I'm gonna say that for episode nine. That that may be. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll say that for episode. Taking notes on that one, man. I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> All right, Jacob. All right, so we have some similar points. So basically, I I did this from my knowledge of what I know about mm-hmm. the Last Jedi so far from the trailers and a little bit of what I would do anyways, even if I didn't know. So basically, it's the same thing. Movie's gonna open up like they said, right where the last one left off. With that scene, we're gonna see Ray and and Luke talk. There, she's not a Skywalker. Yeah. Uh, but. I think she was a part of his academy or something like that. And then uh, when everything went to shit, he took her to Jakku. We'll see what's going on with that. But anyways, so we know Luke is reluctant to train Rey. So that I'm ha- I have that as a major plot point. Obviously, he does train her because we see him training her. In the trailer, yeah. talking about yeah. training her. So he's, he tries to train her, yeah. but he does sense that dark side in mm-hmm. her. He senses a great power, like gr- one of the greatest he's ever sensed. Her and Kylo are like the greatest powers he's ever sensed, other than himself, obviously, and Vader, probably. So he tries to train her, and but he senses that darkness. He gives up. He says, I can't do this anymore. You're on your own. And um, I don't know how this is going to go down. And But um, I do think we're going to see Luke fight. We're going to see Luke fight. He's going to tell her, you're on your own. And this is when Kylo and the Knights of Ren show up on Octo. <sighs> And we get that battle between them. Even though Luke doesn't want to train her, they have no... He's like, oh shit, we don't have a choice. We got to take them on. And I do think, like we've speculated before, Kylo, I don't know, who does he want to kill more, Rey or or Luke? But just the way it happens, the way it goes down, Rey and Kylo end up fighting, are fighting. And I don't know, I think Rey gets her ass beat because a fully healthy Kylo would destroy Rey in two seconds. Um, Probably. So, and then Luke is fighting the Knights of Ren. He kills all of them easily. And then hmm. Kylo, and then it's going to be two on one. Kylo's like, shit, I got to get out of here. And he, he knows if he has to fight Luke and Ray, there's no chance. Even just fighting Luke, he's probably not going to have a chance. So, <laughs> and then, and then now Luke is like, shit, all right. Uh, and now Luke, they go leave together and they go back to the, the first, or the resistance or whatever. Um, but he still is like, I'm not training you. And Ray goes off on her own because she's pissed at Luke. Mm-hmm. And she also finds out that Luke had something to do with the death of her parents. He didn't kill them, but he had something to do with the death of her parents. No, I... And she's like... And he t- he dropped her off on Jakku. So he's like... She's pissed. She's like, why would you do that to me? Like, you could have kept me. You left me on that planet to die, pretty much. I could have... You know, I... And then he... But he did it to protect mm-hmm. her, obviously. Mm-hmm. So she goes off on her own. She goes to find Snoke on her own. She wants answers. She Snoke is from Jakku. We know that, right? Do we know that? No. Oh wait. I don't. Well, I'm saying. All right. All right so you're saying no, Snoke's no. from Jakku? No, no, never mind. I, okay. I, don't know. I was confusing <laughs> I say, I don't know. Snoke with um with the guy from the aftermath trilogy. Oh, that the, guy. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, the yeah, one yeah. who Sloan fights. Yes, at the end. Palpatine's yeah. minion. Yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. So um, but Snoke has something to do with Jakku. Maybe he was originally from there, but I think Snoke's from Wild Space. I think Sloan and uh, Armitage Hux and Brendel Hux, they found Mm -hmm. him out in Wild Space and they came back to the galaxy and they run the First Order together. And uh, so basically, Rey's like, I need answers. She goes to confirm, because obviously we know her and Snoke Mm -hmm. find each other somehow. At the same time, Kylo is regretting, in a way, regretting killing his father. He's torn like he always is. I think Kylo departs from Snoke, too. Kylo finally realizes, like, Snoke is just using me. Like, look what you made me do, in a way. He's not good. He's still a bad guy. He still wants to rule the galaxy. He still has his evil agenda, whatever it may be. But he just, he's like, F Snoke. 
F the force order. I'm going off on my own. And then, obviously, Luke goes... He finds out that Snoke has Rey, but this gets resolved in the movie. Luke goes and he, him and Snoke fight. Like, oh, and with they, sabers? Yes, absolutely. Snoke too. Yes. Oh Snoke man. Is a force user. He's lifting Rey up and like bending her back. Oh so man. Luke, they fight. I, it doesn't. None of neither of them die. That gets resolved. Is resolved in the ninth movie or in Star Wars Episode Nine, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. okay. So, <laughs> anyways, so there's a whole bunch of little details that I'm missing, but anyways. That happens. Ray gets free. It's all going down, and the, all this is going down. There's a big space battle. You know, everybody's fighting. You know, Phasma and Finn are fighting. Ray and Kylo. I think this is just my speculation. This is my pitch. Ray and Kylo do not team up, but they do come together. And even though it looks like they're not in the same spot in the trailer, I do think he's holding his hand out to her. I think she's like. Luke doesn't want to train me. He doesn't think that, you know, the Jedi should go on. And, like, Snoke's an asshole, you know? So neither of them want to go with their mentors. And he's like, let's do this together. Mm -hmm. They don't have... They don't want to, like, kill... They don't want to take over the, the galaxy in an evil way. They're just like, look, it's us against the world. We have to work together. And I do also think... I don't think we find this out in... Um, this movie, but I do think Ray is somewhat related to Obi Wan Kenobi oh, no, no. somehow. Oh, yeah. I do think that. Oh, yeah. um, is that because you want it? Yes, partially. <laughs> but hey, I'm writing the movie, right? I think she is true. Too. very true. I think we find out who her parents are. Like, but as of now, what we know, they're just random mm -hmm. person, random mm -hmm. person A, random person B. But then, can we come to find out that she, they are related to Kenobi somehow? Even if it's not, it could be direct Kenobi's one. sisters. Right. Kid or some kind of relation, like yeah. He some kind of be, relation. He could be her great uncle, mm -hmm. great great uncle, or mm -hmm. something like that. Not, not direct granddaughter. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that, you know. And um, so, anyways, so we know that uh, Finn runs into DJ at the the Canto Bite Casino. I think we meet DJ in the movie. He has a small role. We he, they meet him in that. He's part of that that whole uh, set of scenes on Canto Bite, and they. They don't say his name. We don't know who he is. We don't find out who he is in this movie. But I do think he ends up being Ezra, Ezra Bridger. We talked about it before. Pablo Hidalgo said that the theory of Ezra, him being Ezra and being Ray's father, he confirmed that that's not true. But he didn't confirm that him being Ezra is not true. So I do think he is Ezra. But we find that out in the ninth film. He plays a role taking down Snoke in the First Order with Luke. Is he Force-sensitive? Well, well he's if Ezra. he's if he's Ezra, yes. Sorry. With if he's Ezra, yeah. With uh, Finn, Luke, and the First Order, or and the Resistance, they take down Snoke together. I don't know how Kylo and Rey play into that event in Episode Nine, but the movie ends with Kylo and Rey leaving, like going off together, and that's oh, it's kind man. of like our Empire Strikes, our Empire Strikes Back ending, where like what the hell just happened? How are the heroes gonna go on after this? Also. I think we get introduced to Ray Sloan in this movie. I think she's an old woman, and she is like, she runs the military because we only saw a part of the First Order mm -hmm. in. They're uh, hidden the somewhere, Awakens. yeah. Wherever they're hidden bases, wherever Snoke is, she's the leader. She runs it because we know how she is from the aftermath trilogy, and her and Armitage Hux have a mother-son relationship because if you've read the aftermath novels in the third one. Minor spoiler, I guess, so you can put the spoiler thing up. Um, he, they have a little connection. She, they, basically, they come to an agreement. They're going to watch each other's backs. And I think they had that. Where is she? Did mm -hmm. she die? I think she's still around. She's old, obviously. And they have this mother-son relationship, kind of. And, yeah, that's basically, I mean, it's kind of sloppy. But that is my general pitch for the last Star Wars The Last Jedi. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, two really, really good pitches. Two very different pitches as far as where his char where character goes. Yeah. Um, I think for me, the one thing that, that turned me was Luke not igniting a lightsaber. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, there's no way. I'm be, I'd be so upset. Yeah, like, come on. He'll ignite his lightsaber to, to train with Rey. But he won't fight. He's not going to fight anybody. He's going to... See, I think I, when she hands him the lightsaber, he's going to ignite it. 
like, do you think? Okay, Jacob, is in your pitch? In oh, he he's fighting the Knights of Ren in yours. Um, mm-hmm. And Snoke. I think I think after thirty plus years, it's hard to not be able to use Luke in that way. The reason I have after re- not seeing him for so long. His, this, this, this is the reason. It, you're, you're probably right because um, that's what everyone wants to see the green lightsaber light up again. But the Emperor, if you remember, in Return of the Jedi, doesn't have his lightsaber. That's true. Luke might be at that place where yeah, I don't need a lightsaber. He's like just too he's powerful like enough where he doesn't need force lightning. He's so powerful he doesn't need it. Oh man, Luke's gonna use his force lightning. That's a dark side thing, though. It is, but uh, <laughs> I'm not listen. saying he's dark side, but yeah. he has the he physically has the ability to do it. Sure. Him and Snoke, you know, he can Together. absorb it. Light- well, yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe battle. he can absorb yeah. it like Yoda did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, as just for the pitching goes, I'm choosing Jacobs because Luke fought in Jacobs' yeah. pitch. It's the only reason why <laughs> I'm choosing. That's an easy it. decider, right <laughs> yeah. there, of course. Um, yeah, well. But they're but they're I liked both. your pitch. Yours was a lot more simple. Mine was all over the place. <laughs> yeah. but I did like your pitch. Other than that, Luke is definitely fighting in this movie. <laughs> I think, There's no I think he's fi- he's fighting the Knights of Ren. Fighting the Knights of Ren. Yes. There's going to be a big battle scene at one point or another. Do There's got to be. But if, the, if, no. if that <laughs> if that scene is a it does seem as a flashback that we keep seeing with all the burning buildings mm-hmm. and all the bodies everywhere. He may have already fought the Knights of Ren. That might that may be where we oh, see it. Oh, if it's a that's a great point. Maybe and that's what flushes pitch, him away. We do see him fight, but yeah, in a flashback. a flashback. And then if the mo- the movie plays out the rest the way you explained it, but we do see Luke fight in a flashback. Maybe yeah. that's what pushed him his way is the, the rise of the Knights of Ren. There's one thing I mentioned. We talked about this just off you know any kind of any show or anything, but whatever happened. Ben Solo's turn happened years ago, mm-hmm. and I think that my theory is that he left for like ten years or something, and then came back with the Knights of Ren oh. to attack Luke. I know. I I said when we before, see him, he's in his full. Yeah. I know what turns him. Him finding out that he's related to Darth Vader. Yeah, Darth Vader. from Bloodline. From Bloodline. The reveal. That yeah. Reveal. I don't That's not like the full that. turn. Him and Snow. Well, wouldn't you be pissed? Why would that, my grandfather Darth Vader? I'm gonna be evil. No, now. that it's no, not that. It's, the, it's that his family lied to him his whole entire life. Yeah, that, no, it's no not. One, he's not. That's not no saying told my him. grandfather was evil. I'm gonna be evil. No, that, not yeah. that. The fact that they and just didn't tell that him. made him more vulnerable to Snoke. Yes, he, he's pissed at his mom and his dad. Like okay. you guys lied to me my whole entire life, and at Luke too. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe there's something that hint in the novelization of The Force Awakens. Uh, they hinted at that. Where or, or I think they came out and said that's why Han left. That he was so upset that, that Leia actually found out what happened and kept it from Han. And then once he found but out, Han knows. Well, once he found out, he was so upset. And I wouldn't be surprised if Han didn't know right away that. I don't Leia think they, was right they away. said it in the Bloodline book. Oh, they the did. The only people that knew were Luke, Han, and Leia. They but said the, it in the book. But that, that found out that he turned. What happened? They don't. Oh no! Oh, you talking about Kylo? About, yeah, I'm talking about. Oh yeah, no, no! Yeah. I thought you were talking about. Um, Darth Vader being the father. No, no, yeah, Vader. no. I'm yeah. talking about of course. the. Uh, yeah, he knows. I'm talking about their son's turn. But they said they kept it from him. everybody except Han, Luke, and Leia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so oh, his okay. turn, his turn against. We see what you're saying. I see that, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. and that they said that he was so ups- the the shock of. of, of oh, absolutely. Of That's that a big enough reason for him to cause leave. him yeah. to leave. And so, yeah, maybe there maybe that you know. I don't tear tear marriage apart. Yeah, yeah, your son. Killed a bunch of people and <laughs> turned on his his uncle. Your hello, Rams. Yeah, so asshole. hopefully yeah. we find out in the Last Jedi. I mean, yeah. I think I think we'll find out something about the Knights of Ren and what happened. Yeah. Uh, maybe not to the full extent, but I think they'll reveal pieces. So, what do you think about my theory of Rey and Kylo teaming up? And they're like, there's not one side versus another. There's kind of like the the Resistance versus the First Order versus Kylo Ren and Rey. Like, they're doing their own thing. I was they have to, their own agenda. I was going to originally end my pitch instead of with Luke leaving to go get her. I was going to be Kylo Ren. He finds out that Snoke has her and he's like, what? No, he's going to go back so, and I get think, himself. I think before the trilogy said and done, Kylo's going against Snoke. I think we'll see I them so. fight. Too. I said, I think, yeah. I've, I've always mm-hmm. thought that. that he's going he's gonna to be the he's one. He's not going to be redeemed. Him. He's just no. going to be... Like I said, he's not joining the resistance. Yeah, no, no, he's yeah. doing his own thing. Yeah. I think I'm cool with that as long. I just don't want to see Ray go bad. No, no, no. I don't see, want her going bad. Look, whatsoever. He's not, I don't think you will. Kylo's not going good. Mm-hmm. Ray's not going bad. They're just neutral. Like mm-hmm. they're they make their own agenda. They have their own kind of mm-hmm. Sith relationship where 
because he's going to be, mm. he's more experienced. It's not, they're not the rule of two. It's not that. I'm just yeah. saying that's the only thing I can compare it to is them two as a team. He's the mentor because he's more experienced. He's older. And they just, they have their own agenda. They're going to go take on the galaxy themselves. The and, only, the only... and she's going to prevent him from doing evil things. And he's going to kind of pull her to like kind of break in the rules a little bit, you know? The only reason I would, that I, I'd be okay with that, but just as in storytelling, I mean, there's, Someone's got to be the good guy, and someone's got to, you know, there has, yeah, there has to yeah. be a, you know, the, your good guy, whoever you're rooting for, they have to be the, you know, your, your, uh, there's got to be that resolution of, well, you know. Here's the thing. All right, so their goal is to take down Snoke in the First Order. Right. Ray and Kylo want to do that, but they're doing it on their own. They're not working with the Resistance. So okay. the Resistance is trying to take down Snoke in the First Order, so are Luke and, are um, Kylo and Ray. Yeah. But on their own. They're like, if we take out Snoke... It would definitely be interesting. If we take out I would Snoke, say that. it takes out the M- or the, the First Order. I would definitely, it would definitely be interesting. And I, if they did it right, I'd be 100% on board. Yeah. Because I think seeing Kylo Ren and Rey team up together after they fought each other, fought look, each other a couple times... It's going to be difficult because they've been through some shit. He killed Han. She was really getting attached to Han. But they're, they're going to move past that, you know? I think... From the look of Rey, in the, she's not the same Rey from The Horse no, Awakens. No, 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 no. She's angry. She's like, she's very confused. Yeah. She's not, uh, in, in The Force Awakens, she's very naive and, mm-hmm. and uh, kind of innocent. In this movie, she's going to question that. She's Definitely. like, I'm, I'm not going, like what people say is good and right, she's going to question that and figure out it, figure it out on her own. Definitely. So, what if yeah. she? What if it's like the long kiss goodnight, where she has been kind of brainwashed, and whatever her mem- whatever she was before, gets unlocked, and she turns into this. Just she was this great. She was supposed to be this this great Jedi or whatever something. Uh, that all comes back. Hey, hey, that's what a lot of people don't think disregard Raylo, Rylo, or whatever. Raylo. <laughs> no, no, hey, no. Whatever. Hey. Kenobi, a Kenobi and a Skywalker, and they have a kid together. We got to keep the Skywalker saga going. Oh, all right. Well, on that note, on the <laughs> Raylo note, uh, that is going to wrap up the Padawan today. You heard their pitches for the Last Jedi. Um, before we get out of here, though, I want to thank both these guys for joining me today. Keith, why don't you let them know where they can find you online, man? You can find me on t- the Twitter at Keith Barnes seventy nine, and on Facebook just at Keith Barnes. The Twitter, the Twitter, Jacob. You can find me on Twitter at Jacob Barley underscore. Uh, wish me luck. I'm going to watch Happy Death Day. Oh, good luck yeah, with that we'll one. I, have, I haven't looked at any reviews for that, so. Yeah, me either. I'll, I'll get a review up as soon as possible. Yeah, and you Spoiler, can find me, uh, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Jake Blaine at Twitter, on Twitter and Instagram at Qui Gon Jake. Uh, check out apocalypsemovies.com as well as this YouTube channel, the Padawan Podcast, Comic Hero Talk. Um, trailer reactions, movie reviews, everything that got gone on here, especially uh, iTunes. Our main shows are now up on iTunes. Go and check that out. A free download for you guys. Very simple. Um, thank you for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. And until next time, may the force be with you.